Chronic shoulder pain is a problem that's generally lasted more than three to six months. If pain is ongoing at this point, then we need to start to question whether or not the pain is coming from a structural source. And what I mean by that is the actual joints, muscles, tendons themselves, or from a functional problem, which is likened to the software. So just like a structural problem might be my keyboard's broke on my computer, and a software problem would be that actually my programs just keep crashing and the coding is wrong. Because sometimes the problem lies in the nervous system and not in actually the joint itself. So examples that might cause you chronic shoulder pain will be something like a frozen shoulder, something that everyone's heard of and everyone thinks they have. But actually frozen shoulder, which is an adhesive capsulitis, is actually quite rare. It's more common in actually diabetics and there's an unknown source really of how it happens. But what we do know is that it can take 12 to 18 months to recover. And it's a really, really difficult one. And what you'll see is extremely limited range of motion. It's literally frozen, but you shouldn't be able to move it more than a couple of degrees in any direction. And in those first six months, it might be freezing. Then there's a kind of maintenance period and then it tends to loosen up over time. And treatment in that time frame is more about symptom management because what's happened is inside the joint, what's normally like a water-based substance almost becomes a bit thicker. And so there's been a structural change to the joint. And so that's why medically they do some manipulation under anesthetic. And it's something that if we do diagnose you with, we'll have to discuss with you further. So that's the first consideration. The next thing to consider is some form of impingement. And so what that means is what can happen is when I move my arm out to the side, what should happen is my shoulder should drop down first and then out to the side because two muscles should pull it down to give the bone or my arm bone space to be clear enough to move up. And so if you're a person that when you move your arm out to the side and you get to about here, and it really, really hurts, but you find that if you turn your arm or your palm to face upwards, it's a lot easier then it's more likely that you're suffering from this umbrella type issue, which can consist of some tendonitis where uh, this space is in the top of the shoulder and some bursitis, some inflammation of the structures in uh, the top of the shoulder joint. And so what you're doing by turning the palm up is essentially giving the bone space to move again. And so it's quite a, a, an easy way for us to diagnose, okay, there's some form of impingement. Even then though, when there is a clear structural issue, the question is why has it come to be anyway? Because sometimes that impingement is a chronic um, result of inefficient movement, perhaps because of past injuries in the neck. So have you had a whiplash? Have you had a concussion? Or some trauma to the wrist. And so the shoulder has been compensating for so long, moving in such a different way, jar jarring up, that now it's become impinged and inflamed. And so with chronic shoulder pain, we're looking for these types of diagnosis first. So the key thing is really the assessment to find out where the source of the problem is coming from. Is it a compensation over time or is there something else? And so the important, the important thing is, what can I do whilst in chronic pain? Well, alongside the treatment process, moving it in a pain-free way is the most important thing. We don't ever wanna push into pain. And so if I can only get to 90 degrees here, I never want to go to 90 degrees. I'm only going to want you to go to maybe 80 degrees and move the shoulder in any way possible. Doesn't matter. As long as you're not going into the painful barrier, come just short of it, move around it. And eventually what you'll find by moving in the safe space is this barrier slowly gets bigger and you'll be able to get to 100 degrees, 110 degrees, as the nervous system lets go of that tissue and allows it to move more freely. So pain-free movement is the most important thing. You're also gonna have a section in this area about isometrics. And so what we can start doing is contracting the muscle in a static way to almost kind of rebuild the connection to the shoulder, which has been shown to act like a really nice, almost analgesic painkiller whilst you're going through that process. So that's the next important step that you need to do. And then finally, it's about modifying your day-to-day -day life, unfortunately, so that you're not going into pain all the time. 
because when you're triggering the pain, to some extent, you're validating the need for it. The nervous, the nervous system is recognizing that, oh, okay, you keep doing things that I'm having to give you pain for, so I should keep giving you pain because pain is an alarm because I'm trying to get you to change something. And so we need to take away anything that's re-triggering that response. So changing how we're putting our clothes on, not because it's gonna cause damage, not because it's gonna cause damage, because we don't wanna create this kind of illusion of danger. And we want to do things in a safe way. Looking at how our driving position, instead of driving with our hand on top of the wheel, let it relax down in, in a different position. When you're working on a computer, make sure that the keyboard is brought towards you so your elbow is by your side and not reaching forwards in front and putting you in a bad position for extended periods of time. The position itself isn't the most important thing, it's the change of position. But certainly we don't want to be in in a position for too long of a period. So change that regularly. So these are all things that are important to reduce this kind of trigger of pain whilst you're recovering. Once the nervous system has become a little bit more desensitized, and the way that we know that is quite simple, is that when you come into the clinic and you lie down and we test all the muscles around the shoulder, of which there's about 18. So it's a pretty complicated joint and it requires muscular stability. And we need to make sure that all those muscles are working in synchrony, like a beautiful orchestra. They turn on at the right time, they turn off at the right time. They work as a team. Because when the shoulder moves, there is a predetermined sequence of how those muscles are meant to fire. One, two, three, four, five, six. But sometimes when the nervous system is trying to protect it, it's three, two, one, five, four. And it just all gets a bit crazy. So when you can do a normal activity, irrelevant of pain, what we're looking at is function first. Can you connect to all these muscles in, a, in, a, in an efficient way? And if the nervous system is saying, okay, I'm not trying to protect that anymore, then, okay, great, we can move on to more movement and more strength-based work. And it might not even be till then that actually the pain really, really drops away. Or you find that your movement is back, but at the very end ranges or at a certain activity, it just catches. And that's pretty normal in a recovery. So work through the step-by-step -step process and eventually, get to the strengthening phase, the final phase, to bulletproof it from future injury.